Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We have a new show for you, and we think you're going to like the show of today. There's so much news breaking. Okay? For the show of today, there are two main news items. With a new year, new fashion, new resolutions. We hope you've made your new year resolutions. Sometimes it's really difficult to keep to the resolutions we make, but we we'll try as much as possible to do that. So we encourage you to keep your New Year vows. For the show of today, we're really going to focus on feminism, women. We're going to look at 2022 in review. How was 2022 like? We're going to harp on most of the themes which are dear to us as Africans. We'll look at the news, what happened last year in 2022. But we're going to focus more on women. We're going to talk more about women because we want to focus on issues that affect women. Issues that affect women offer, also affect us. And women tend to have a subtle influence on the political apparatus. Sometimes we're not even aware of this. So we want to bring this to the fore so that your average person can see the way women have been working in the shadows. They are even coming out in the shadows to show their power and influence in the politics. We're not just talking only about the wife of African presidents. We're also talking about other females, like the daughters of presidents, relatives of presidents, who are really wielding a lot of influence in Africa. Okay? But before we go there, we want to express our sadness. We lost Pope Benedict the uh, Sixteenth. That's uh, Cardinal Ratzinger. He was uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. He resigned and gave. Uh, power to Pope Francis. He's been living in the Vatican. The last few days he's been sick and he expired on January, on December 31st, 2022. We are Catholics and we really feel the loss of the Pope. Pope Ratzinger was known as a very tough uh, enforcer. He was more of a conservative. He was taking the Catholic Church towards a direction of continuation as a conservative. But the world had changed, okay? Just like Islam is working itself out in a new world, Catholicism too has been facing challenges to keep more members in the fold. The world is changing. Some of the dogma are not accepted by the faithful. How do you make sure that you keep the faithful following this dogma? There were issues like sex, okay? Young priests sleeping with young children, old priests sleeping with boys, homosexuality. So the church has been handling a lot of these issues, especially during the time of uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. He tried to handle it, but we think with his resignation, we had uh, Pope Francis who had to take a different route. He is more conciliatory, a lot uh, gentler and softer. So we hope. We can remember Pope Benedict as a tough enforcer, and he was an intellectual. He did a lot for the church, so we have to accept, may his soul rest in peace. Then we also had another big death, King Pele. We like football a whole lot. I know Americans call it soccer. We also lost King Pele. Pele died, but one of the reasons why we're really happy with Pele is because he was the greatest in football. He even predicted that in no time Africa is going to win the World Cup. Unfortunately, this did not happen during his lifetime, but we know the way African teams have performed very well, sooner or later Africans are going to win the World Cup. So we, we like this uh, prediction. We know it's going to come to pass. Africans are going to win the World Cup because African players have improved tremendously. They no longer have a complex when they see European uh, players. So this is really great. And we feel sorry for this loss of Pele because he makes us really happy. When you watch Pele, you are happy with the, the game. I even remember during the Nigerian Biafran War, the war was stopped for a while because both camps wanted to see uh, King Pele play football. Okay? So this is a guy who could stop a war. So how great was that? 
And he was also a great philanthropist, so his influence is all over. But what we also like about uh, King Pele is the fact that he was a patriot. He loved his country, Brazil. He brought pride to Brazil. Unlike some other players, he never left Brazil to go and play in Europe. For a short time, he played with Santos in the US, but he always had Brazil in his heart. So that's great, okay? Without further ado, we really want to go now to the, the show which ennobles women. Feminism, we have to talk about issues with women. Women are very, very important. Without women, there will be no society. So women play a very important role in society. Sometimes when people don't realize this and it happens, they are kind of shocked. But we want to talk about femme fatale, which is a French term for a dangerous kind of woman. You may look at her. She can wield influence. She can wield power without you re really realizing it. And that's what is happening to some of the women we're going to talk about. From the very beginning, we want to start first in America. Claudine Gay has been made the president of Harvard University. For a, a black lady, this is really great. This is a great achievement. She's been a professor of uh, African studies, African and African-American studies. Finally, she's become the president of Harvard University in America. So this is a great achievement for us blacks. This is a lady who uh, hails from Haiti. Her parents came from Haiti. Then she's been able to climb the echelon of uh, power and success. And we encourage more women to climb. And we encourage the men and the women who give opportunities to women so that they can realize their aspirations. Our daughters were, were saying, we welcome you into the fall, do big things, and we want to see more women achieving. In Africa, too, you have women who are wielding influence. We we'll start with Ambazonia and La Replique du Cameroon. We have Chantal Bia from Cameroon, and you guys have seen this lady. She's probably the lady most, uh, first lady most Africans are familiar with because she has these her big hairdos that have become <coughs> the, the talk of uh, the, the, the continent. But what people don't realize is she is the second wife of uh, President Paul Bia. Since she initially, people underrated her because they felt she was a street girl. She came from nowhere and married the president. But she took some time and had to plan to cultivate influence and power in the presidency. So she has her own influence. So you can even see the guy who runs the country today of La Republic of Cameroon, Ferdinand Gongo, is a relative of Chantal Bia. He's Chantal Bia's protégé. And you can see that. When the criminal court wanted to ask this guy to appear, Ferdinand Gongo, he refused to appear. Why? Because Chantal has his back. He's, he's not afraid because Chantal has his back. President Paul Bia Raina is almost like a retired president. He's ailing. When he came to Washington a few weeks ago, you guys saw it. He can already do much for himself. So the person who is really running Cameroon is Ferdinand Gongo. Ferdinand Gongo is the active president of Cameroon. But there is a, a vice president, or what I call a co-president. You not know, like her, are finding out the hard way that you don't mess up with her. They are now seeing her influence and power. Jeanne Afrique, a very popular African uh, newspaper, has talked about the power and influence of Chantal Bia in Etudi Palace. The president himself calls her Madame La Presidente. So he recognizes that he's in a co-presidency. Then when you bring Ferdinand Gongo, the presidency becomes a triumvirate, which means there are three persons in this presidency. Just like in religion, you have three persons in God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So in this case, Paul Bia is God the Father, Chantal is God the Son, then Ferdinand Gongo is the Holy Spirit. So that's just the way I will compare it so that Christians can make sense of what is happening in La Republic of Cameroon. Today, as we record this show, we just received a lot of news from Nigeria, which you call Grand One. A lot of Ambazonians are complaining that the Bia government is killing a lot of people from Ambazonia. Then they are asking, 
the BR government kills these people, then they parade their bodies for the world to see. But when Ambazonians kill soldiers from La Republic, they don't parade their bodies. So they are asking themselves, why is the BR government doing all of this nonsense? Then they are asking themselves, now that Ms. Chantal is the leader, is she, as a mother, not sympathetic to Ambazonians? So they have a, a video. Then they even gave me a picture with Chantal holding the Ambazonian flag. I want to show it to you. Chantal Bia holding the Ambazonian flag. They want her to embrace a form of rapprochement. They want the world to come to an end. So that's the message that they were giving to Chantal Bia. She's a mother. Let her think. Tomorrow, Mr. Bia is not going to be there. He will be expired. So what happens after he passes through transition? She's going to face tough times. And she should understand she's going to face tough times when Bia exits. Because whatever she does today is going to affect her tomorrow. It's not only going to affect her, it's also, also going to affect her children. So she has to start thinking strategically. Unfortunately, when people are in power, most of the time they don't think. The war is not good. The war is killing so many people. How many more people have to die before Chantal Bia can tell her husband to stop the killing, stop the war? How many more people have to die? That's the question you are asking me to raise with Chantal Bia. So I'm taking this message to Chantal Bia. How many more people from Ambazonia have to die before you tell your husband to stop the war? How many more? Tell me. And you can see that even in the north of Cameroon, soldiers are dying. Cameroon is not only facing the Ambazonian revolution, Cameroon is also facing jihadists in the north, Boko Haram. And in the northern area, I know that area very well because I've lived in Mindif. So I know the area of Marwa, Garwa, and Gaundere, the whole northern region. I know it very well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these soldiers are being ambushed. And this week, a lot of ambushes took place, and some of these soldiers lost their lives. So how many more soldiers have to die before you call for peace, you sue for peace? That's sad. Okay, Chantal is not the only femme fatale we know. Another femme fatale we're going to introduce you to is Isabel Dos Santos of Angola. In the past, we showed you a lot of uh, videos and pictures of uh, Isabel Dos Santos, the daughter of uh, Eduardo Dos Santos, the former president of Angola who died. Isabel Dos Santos had taken advantage of her father's position as president to make herself the richest woman in Africa. She became a billionaire. Unlike Oprah Winfrey, who is a billionaire in America, Isabel Dos Santos did not make her money by doing real business. She just exploited her father's position as president. She did a lot of shady stuff. Now, the, the government of Angola is trying to seize her assets. That's what Isabel Dos Santos is facing today. So you can see now that even the powerful, there are times when the bell tolls for them. And the bell is tolling for Isabel Dos Santos. We have a lot of pictures. We've covered up many times on this show. So on this show of today, we really want to draw attention to people who take advantage of their position and abuse others. So that's what we can tell you about Angola. Next, we we'll take you to Chad. In Chad, we've just had a transition. Idris Debi Itno died, but his son Mahatma Itno took over. But there was already conflict in the clan. It looks like immediately Idib Itno died, his wife Hinda Itno escaped Chad and ran to Cameroon. In fact, we understand she had to meet Betty Asomo, the Minister of Defense of La Republic of Cameroon. So when the husband died, she could not really stay in Chad because she was afraid. Two of her brothers were even arrested. They were released just a few weeks ago. So you can see that things have been tough for her. So how is this new news affecting the First Lady? Hinda Idno had escaped from Chad. She went to Cameroon. Then from there, after the funeral of her husband, she settled in France. We hear she is now a student studying in Paris, nearly. That's the place where she's studying. So what is going to happen? Is this the end? 
We don't think so because it's another chapter in the Debbie Itno family saga. Next, we'll take you to Congo DRC. We've been covering Congo DRC on this show a whole lot. So it looks like new elections are coming up in Congo DRC. But there's a lady I call a femme fatale. Her name is Olive Lembe Kabila. That's the wife of uh, Joseph Kabila, the president who left in 2019. After Kabila left power, it didn't take long. He fell out with his protege, his handpicked successor, Felix Chisekedi. We told you before on this show, if you watch our shows on YouTube, we said this pact is not going to hold because we've seen the way those pacts happen between presidents. So Joseph Kabila was thinking that uh, he can stay in the shadows and still wield power. But today, it did not really take long. He and Felix Sekedi are already having problems. So it looks like the government is watching him, watching all his steps. Whenever he travels to South Africa, they are watching him. He has stolen a lot of money from Congo DRC, and they are watching him very closely. His brothers and relatives are making noise, especially his wife, Olive Lembe Kabila. She has uh, some non-profit organizations where she's doing things. She's doing good. Initiative Plus, that's the name of her uh, uh, <laughs> company. But she's criticizing Felix Shisekedi a whole lot, and people are saying she's becoming political, very political. She says what she's doing is social politics, not politics politics. <laughs> What's the difference? I think that's just uh, a form of malapropism. It doesn't really mean much. So we're going to see how the new elections is going to play out already. Felix Chisekedi is watching Joseph Kabila very cl uh, closely. Joseph Kabila's wife is the one who is really criticizing Felix Chisekedi. Felix Chisekedi is also running for re-election. So how is this going to play out? It looks like the media has been taking time, butting heads. Olive Lembe Kabila versus uh, the wife of Chisekedi. Who is first lady? So who is who? These issues are coming to the fore. But how are these issues going to be resolved? Is Joseph Kabila going to take it lying down, or is he going to try to revenge? Already he feels like Felix Shisekedi is not appreciating what he did for him. He gave him power. We told you before, the person who actually won the election in Congo DRC is Martin Fayulu. But Felix Shisekedi came in just like a Trojan horse. Kabila had picked him, thinking that he would protect his interests. But now, Felix Shisekedi wants to stay in power. He doesn't want Kabila to come back. How is this going to play out? It remains to be seen. But we want you to see the power of Olive Lembe Kabila. She is the one now who is speaking in public against Felix Shisekedi. Is the president of the country going to take it positively or is going to take it negatively? It remains to be seen. But we say keep an eye on Olive Lembe Kabila. She's a personality and a lot of the opposition. In fact, even today, we notice that some of the members of Kabila's cabinet, three of them, resign because they're anticipating Moise Katumbe and other people to run. Then most of the people who are in the army, Felix Sekedi is cutting them to size. He's removing some of them who are Kabila loyalists, just as a, a guarantee against Kabila coming back to power. Do you need tax preparation services? We can help. Contact PJ Tax Service, America's only full-time income tax preparers. Like the good old doctor, we do not close our doors after April 15th. In fact, we stay open all year round in order to serve you. We are located at 11207A Lockwood Drive, Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. Make an appointment today with Prince Ojong, your tax expert. Call 240-350-1131 or visit us on the web at www.pjtaxservice.com. Next, we take you to Ivory Coast. In Ivory Coast, we also see another first lady, okay? Henriette Conan Bidier. That's the wife of one of the former presidents. She is really quiet. 
when her husband was in power, she was kind of like a political, but it looks like she's been doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So that's how you see how this farm fatal will influence and power. She has non-profit organizations, and she's been doing stuff to keep herself in the limelight. You, we've been reading a lot of stories about her presence, and we think this is something that you guys need to pay attention to. So as the year is dawning, the new year is dawning, we need to look at what these personalities are doing. It's like we're watching a play, a play in five acts. So start looking and watching the actors. We're bringing you some of the actors that you need to pay attention to. So Henriette Conan Bidier is an actress you need to watch in Ivory Coast. Then we'll take you to Nigeria. In Nigeria, the actress is Aisha Buhari. She's not a politician, but you've seen that she wields influence. A few weeks ago, we even reported that she had an issue with a child who said, mommy has gotten fat of the food and wealth of Nigerians. She got very angry and decided to imprison the boy. Because of overwhelm on, in, on social media, she was forced to release the, the boy Mohammed after beating him quite a bit. So just beat the young boy for no good reason, just for criticizing Aisha Buhari on social media. So you see, she wields influence and she does things against Nigerians because she is first lady. So she's wielding influence. So she's a, a personality to watch. How is she going to handle the fact that her husband is leaving next year, maybe in May 2023? How is she going to deal with the cabal she's been criticizing all this time? Because the election fever is on in Nigeria right now. You can see Bola Tinibu dribbling a lot of his opponents. He's spreading money left and right. We even saw pictures of uh, Vice President Austin Bajo sitting with uh, Bola Tinibu. We thought he was angry with the guy because he was competing with him, but he brought him in, and I'm sure he gave him some cash. We even had a video of uh, Bola Tinibu giving cash to guys just for support. The guy seems to be buying his way, and we told you Nigerian politics, just like American politics, is money politics. He who has the goal rules, and it looks like Bola Tinibu has the goal. He's, he's the one who's going to be ruling. From Nigeria now, we we'll take you to Rwanda. Rwanda is an interesting story. In Rwanda, you can see that the European Union has been telling uh, Paul Kagame, stop supporting the M23. Stop supporting the M23 because we remember the Rwandan genocide. Juvenal Habirimana was killed. It's a Hutu who was killed. And as a result, the Hutus decided to slaughter the Tutsis. So most of the Tutsis ran to Congo, DRC. Then they formed a rebellion. Then they came back and took power in Rwanda. And that's how Paul Kagame became president. Even though we've done with the, the genocide, people are still watching Agathe Habirimana, the wife of Juvenal Harimana. She's in France. We understand Paul Kagame is not really nice to his opponents. Is he going to take her out? So that's a story we want you to follow and watch closely. Is Paul Kagame going to take out Agathe Habirimana, the wife of Juvenal Habirimana, the Hutu couple? It remains to be seen. What we're asking you to watch, that's the task we give you for the new year. What about South Africa? Well, we're also going to introduce you to another femme fatale, and this is the wife of Cyril Ramaphosa. Her name is Sepo Motsepe. I know most of you are familiar with Patrice Motsepe, the president of uh, the African uh, Cup, okay? The African Cup Confederation. You, you know him. He's a mining magnate. This is the brother of the wife of Cyril Ramaphosa. Most of you know him. But the wife of Cyril Ramaphosa is a physician and also a philanthropist. We are saying... A lot of things are happening in South Africa. This week, we saw the way uh, some South Africans were beaten. Black South Africans, young, young black South Africans were beaten because they went, to a wide, uh, they went to a resort and they did not want them to swim in that resort. The resort is like uh, a, a public place. You can come and enjoy yourself by choice. But because they are black, they do not want them to swim at this resort. So the white guys started beating them. 
They will ask you, racism, segregation, is still the original sin of South Africa. It has not been cleansed yet. So, Madam Shepo Mosepe, tell your husband to focus on racism in South Africa and not worry about just money. The ANC is losing its cachet because they are not only really helping to emancipate black people. And that's the complaint a lot of South Africans are making. So do something about it. Then finally, we're going to end the show of today by taking you to Tunisia. Tunisia was really the cradle of the Arab Spring. Some of you may not know this, but Tunisia is the cradle of the Arab Spring. Ben Ali was shocked when <laughs> a petty uh, trader burned himself. And he even went and visited this petty trader in the hospital. That's how the Arab Spring started in Tunisia. Eventually, Ben Ali was chased out. He even died in Saudi Arabia. But today, his wife is back in the news because Tunisia is really having a lot of problems. There is still a lot of chaos. When we thought the Arab Spring has arrived in Tunisia, Tunisia has moved back to dictatorship. And that's the problem we're facing. It looks like most of the gains we had with democracy in Africa have been lost. And that's our complaint with the show of today. So thank you very much for watching our show of today. We like to support women. And this show is dedicated to all the mothers and sisters out there. We're telling you that we love you and want you to do well for in 2023. Our message is we're looking for ways to empower women. Let us empower our African women. Let us be proud when we see them succeeding. Let's not condemn them. Thank you very much. May God bless you. Bye-bye. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA. Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.